Society annual senior management meeting and the launch of our 200th anniversary um, on, on Friday night was our 199th birthday and uh, we are going to now have the 200th year celebrations of Bible Society um, in South Africa. 200 years ministering to churches, serving churches with scriptures, translating Bibles into all our official languages, and uh, 200 years of revising scriptures, 200 years of helping the church to reach out to the unsaved and to get them saved. And God is all glory to God. He's been gracious, and it's grace upon grace uh, that he's given. I don't know, I think my presentation is ready, and I've got to, apparently this thing's got to warm up for 10 seconds first, and uh, then we can kick off with our presentation. Um, our, our vision is a Bible for everyone um, in South Africa, that is. Uh, we could go for the whole world, and we are supporting world translations to the tune of about 4 million a year uh, from Bible Society SA. But um, wouldn't it be wonderful in the kingdom of God if everybody had a Bible in South Africa? Uh, 23 million people, according to S Ipsos Machinor's research, don't have a Bible at all. And um, I think most of us are sitting there, we've got maybe five or ten in our study, isn't that right? And um, God has blessed us in so many ways, and we really appeal to you as you look through this presentation with me to catch the vision and to get a burning in your heart to place scriptures where they're really needed um, amongst the poor, amongst the prisoners, amongst the needy of our country. And um, God has really uh, lifted us in our standard of living so that we can have a wonderful standard of giving as well. And uh, what, a blessed, what a blessing it is uh, to be a Christian um, in, in these days and have some means to be able to help those around about. I think we all realize that the country we're living in um, is supported by a handful of people and that is the taxes are growing and they're going to grow more um, but you know God has never been in anybody's debt and uh, when we give to the poor we're giving we're lending to the Lord and he always repays his debt always and uh, so it's really wonderful that God has blessed South Africa with a Bible society that's been able to stay the course and remain unscathed and faithful to him over the 200 years. And Dirk Giver sends regards. He said to me especially, please greet those who remember me at uh, Durban North Presbyterian Church. Um, we, we're quite close and we do pray for each other on Tuesdays especially. We have a prayer and fasting day uh, where the CEO and certain of the Bible Society personnel who really have a passion for what is is um, for his well-being join him in prayer and I think he needs your prayer it's a big challenge and I will tell you a little bit about that as we go through this presentation so firstly let's see if this thing is working not working I'm switched on let's see not Otherwise, you're going to have to pull it through for me, my brother. Is it working? All right, it's working now. Great. There's our mission. It's a task of Bible Society um, of South Africa to translate. And I think it's a very important point. We translate scriptures. So together with other organizations that do that as their sole mission, we also translate uh, scriptures. And I'll tell you uh, in a moment about that. Um, there, there the tasks are. Uh, translation, publication, distribution, Bible engagement, and Bible advocacy. Those are the five things that we do. And the last two, um, Bible engagement, sorry, let me just get that right. The last two, Bible engagement and advocacy, is something that has been introduced post uh, Reverend uh, uh, Kritzner, that Germany Kritzner is CEO. So since Dirk has come in, Bible Society SA has embarked on advocacy and engagement. As in addition to the three core missions of Bible Society. So we have a five-fold ministry. Isn't that wonderful? And all Calvinists preach five-fold uh, points in their sermons, don't they? All right? And we love the word. I'm just joking, but there's five points for you, right? Okay. Um, here we have 
uh, who we serve. We serve all churches, and if um, you thought it was just the Baptists and the Presbyterians, uh, you're wrong. It's all churches that need the Word of God. Uh, church organizations, we, we, as you've heard, we, we, we supply Bibles to seafarers, to mission to seamen, uh, scripture union, youth for Christ, all sorts of churches and organizations use our ministry, and then also obviously individuals, and I had the joy of selling a Bible to someone here this morning. I bought Bibles for display, and she said, I want that one, so I said, I'll make a plan, but leave it here. Then we thought better of it, because somebody else might buy it at the end. So she got her Bible, but they, I haven't come to sell today. Um, I'll leave brochures. And you'd, we're in Mabel. It's close enough to come just in, into the shop if you want to get some. So the mission today is just to show you what we're doing. There's our four uh, signature um, free grant or project grant pro, uh, programs that we have. Um, the poorest of the poor. Um, there are churches that minister into the shack areas and so forth where people really, really are eking out a living on less than a couple of bucks a day. And we want to give Christians in those sort of circumstances a Bible. And so we've allocated Bibles for that. And you, through us, can be part of that. And then also prisoners. Uh, we're working very differently these days. We allocate a certain amount to the prison ministry itself, to the head of prisons and the chaplains. And they get distributed and we're told where they're distributed and we can hold them accountable for those Bibles. But then we've also got a set amount that we allocate to Kairos and Alpha and other recognized uh, prison ministries. And they come and do application to us and get Bibles to take into prisons and give to people that they're working with. And um, obviously then they can have genuine cell meetings um, in there as well. All right one person um, that got that joke. Okay. <laughs> the others didn't really like it. Okay. We have literacy material um, that we're developing. Now we've got the first two books out, teaching children how to read and write using Bible. Using so that the first thing they really learn to read <laughs> is the Bible, and that's wonderful. And we're bringing out a third volume now which takes them into maths and uh, basic arithmetic and stuff like that as well. So we, we're developing this process whereby children and adults that, have, that are illiterate learn to read and write using the Bible. And in, in so doing, get the Bible into their hearts. And you know what they say, if you can train the child until they're seven in the ways of the Lord, they'll remain that way forever. And we thank the Lord for that. Um, then also our grade seven um, project is really, really uh, taking off in a big way. And next year, we hope to place... 600,000 Bibles, complete Bibles, in the hands of grade 7 learners across South Africa. So that is going to make a huge impact. Imagine if, say, 5% of those Bibles were really uh, touched the heart and converted those people. There would be a massive amount of um, positive uh, spin-off for, for the gospel and for the kingdom. Some of our distribution stats... Um, they're too small to really see, but the, the, the green slice of that pie is Isizulu. Um, that's what we sell the most of in South Africa, is Isizulu Bibles. Did you know that? Eh? Um, yeah. Then the next, mo the, the next lot is English. Maybe English is, is on a par with Zulu because Zulu's got two versions that they sell. Um, English, GNT. The good news version is what we sell the most of in South Africa. Did you know that? No? You don't like the GNT? Okay. Um, it's, it's good for people who can't read the language, you know, and uh, not proficient. Very, very good. And so we, we, we've produced or distributed a lot of those, and Afrikaans is the third. So English, Afrikaans, and Zulu are, the, are your three predominant sales, and then Isikaza and then your Tseperi and, and all the rest of them come in after that. There you can see just a, a little bit more on how they outstrip each other with English right at the top and then going down to your Zulu, Koza, Afrikaans. The, the Zulu um, is a combined total of the old version and the new version put together. So it's English, Zulu, um, Koza, Afrikaans, and then the other Zulu one as well. So it's, you can see there's a massive amount of Bibles going out and it's really wonderful. Our 2020 celebrations are coming up, our 200th anniversary, and there's four things we want to do during this year. 
we want to give out, or during this period, we want to give out 2 million Bibles. I told you right at the beginning, there's 23 million people without a Bible in South Africa. So 2 million Bibles. Dirk Giver's dream okay, is to place 2 million Bibles. Will you help him? Eh? Um, who's Dirk Giver's? He's a Presbyterian minister. Okay? And he's the head of, CC, uh, of, of uh, Bible Society South Africa. He's the CEO of Bible Society South Africa. And it's his dream. He believes the Lord has given him this dream to place two million Bibles in our, cellar, our bicentennial year. Um, the first thing is we, we want to do is, is um, give out a Bible, a standard Bible or an outreach Bible and literacy material. Those are two things. And then we want to contribute to the first language translations. In other words, all our language, official languages have been translated, even English. And it's going to be launched later this year. Um, but the Qun and the Kwedam, which are the San languages, have never had a translation. They have very little literature. So what we're doing is we're investing from this bicentenary collection from the churches and the funds we raise, we're collecting to make it possible to translate those so that they get a first Bible in their own language. Um, and that would be wonderful. There's two projects like that coming up in 2020. And then the last thing that we do is part of that contribution of 100 Rand will go towards keeping the cost of a hard-covered, good quality Bible as low as we possibly can because of the economics of the day. So 100 Rand in the pull bottle. You know, you know the little pull bottles, eh? I got very few back last time. I think people kept them for sample bottles. Eh? Uh, these are not sample bottles. You've got to put coins in here and uh, keep it in your safe. And you know what? 100 rand's not a lot of money nowadays. Eh? Um, it buys a pizza. Isn't that right? And when I look around here, if somebody makes, some of you make a, a, a sacrifice of one pizza in a year, it could help. Okay. So, no offense, please. Okay. Me too. But um, seriously speaking, 100 bucks in a year is not a lot of money, and even for pensioners. Um, I, I live in a place called Costa Geriatrica. Um, uh, that's the south coast, by the way. Okay? Uh, we all the new retirement villages opening up from Woodnam down the south coast. Quite a, it's quite interesting. Uh, that's why I call it Costa Geriatrica. And I've kind of like positioned myself so that I can just retire there anyway. You know? um, and our church, uh, Scott Baptist Church, where I worship down 60, 70 k's from here, is made up of a lot of seniors. Um, and they took it on themselves to raise 100 rand per person towards grade 7 schools in the area. And uh, I want you, the, the, the church is not very big, by the way. We have about a 60, 70 members, about 120, 130 attending on a Sunday. You know what we raised? Take a guess. 14,000 rand with little one these pull bottles. Can you imagine that? It's 140 bottles. How many people are sitting here today and how many people attend church? If each one of you commits to sacrificing that one pizza in a year, you could be touching the lives of untold thousands of people in South Africa for the gospel of the kingdom of God. And I think we all love the word. But love it so much that you want to share it with somebody else. One beggar finding telling another beggar where to find bread and helping him to find bread would be a great thing. So let me, let me just say our 200th anniversary or our bicentenary is a big deal to Dirk and to Bible Society. And you'll be getting literature, you'll be getting um, pamphlets, um, all sorts of things during this year just to encourage you to, to buy into this thing and saying that if the Lord enables you to make a sacrifice Fill one of these with a 100 rand note, and there's some of you might want to put a few in. Um, five rand coins, two rand coins. Shame, all the poor car guards are going to miss out, you know. Uh, but, but, but certainly, every one of these touches somebody's life in, in South Africa. Child of literacy material, a full Bible for someone, great, uh, the, the first language Bible translations, and keeping Bibles affordable. Four things you can do with this. Okay, let me move on. Let me just tell you, break down the, the, 
what has happened during the year so far. The launch happened on Friday. The launch of our 200th anniversary happened on Friday. So <clears throat> um, we had a gala dinner with 400 people present, present and the head of Bible Society International came and addressed us um, as, as a group of, um, of Bible, Bible Society staff and supporters. Um, <clears throat> our 200 million Bible project, there it is there, 200 million, a 2 million Bible project um, was launched as well and uh, Bible Society staff have all been encouraged to contribute 100 Rand a month uh, to this project and we are encouraged to take these bottles and whatever means we can to our families, encourage them. The whole staff is involved. So we're setting the example and encouraging churches to do this in a big way in 2020. Um, wouldn't it be wonderful if, if we can reach the 2 million Bibles in 2020 and our 200th anniversary and leave a legacy for the for generations to come, that it's possible to do great things for God. Then you'll see the launch of the Zulu Bibles taking place in October. It was going to be July. Um, we have been in consultation and we've met personally with the king, uh, Goodwill Zuelatini. And politics aside, he is the cultural custodian of the Zulu people. And so we've met with him and we've met with uh, Prince Buchelezi and both of them are Anglican members and good standing. Both of them have given endorsement of the launch of the Zulu Bible to take place in Ulundi. Um, in October when we will make known to the Zulu community of South Africa that we have a translation that has been approved by PANSALB which is the Pan-African National Language Board um, they have approved the content in terms of language um, and uh, it has been translated by Zulu speaking people uh, it's been reviewed by Zulu speaking people not white but African Zulu speaking people and it's genuine, authentic um, South African product for the Zulu nation. So, wonderful translation coming up. Then our birthday weekend is on the 23rd of August in Cape Town when uh, we'll have international guests coming in and a big weekend of celebrations. I'm leading a group of international bike riders, motorbike riders from Durban down the east coast all the way to Cape Town, stopping all the while we're going and dropping Bibles and, and placing Bibles at schools all the way down. So I'm really pumped about that and uh, we'll kick it off with a big devotion at Bible House and then we'll see maybe 30, 40, 50 motorbikes roaring down. Our first stop is Matati Yell and then we'll be uh, um, uh, placing Bibles in Elliot and, and so forth down the coast, all the way down the coast, down the garden route. And what a wonderful time that the that Bible Society international riders are coming to ride with us. We've got a team that's starting in Kempton Park and going down to Bloemfontein and then cutting across the Karoo, another 30 or 40 bikes. And then we've got bikers traveling from Kempton Park to Uppington and then down the West Coast. And we're all culminating on the birthday weekend in August next year, culminating in, in Cape Town and we're having a mass ride through Cape Town with all other bikers that want to join us to celebrate 200 years of God's faithfulness and Bible placement at grade 7 schools all the way. And then that's not all. Uh, we've got a cycle team that's cycling from Messina to Cape Town. And they will be riding that whole way in relays. And we, there's a whole lot of stuff going on on the birthday weekend on the 23rd of August next year. So uh, that will be the end of our 200th anniversary or the actual date of our 200th anniversary. So I'm, I'm getting goosebumps about that all. Um, wonderful. Um, those, those that are older and are not on motorbikes, please pray for us that we don't break anything. All right. Okay. And my, I didn't break my foot on the motorbike either, by the way. All right. And then the last launch that we'll have um, in 2020 is the launch of the Afrikaans Bible in November um, of 29, uh, 2020 when the, uh, the brand new Bible that is literal but in modern Afrikaans um, is going to be launched. It's been requested by the church and we felt that that would be a good thing to do. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, November this year, the English Bible for the Deaf is going to be launched. And, uh, and we're working with an organization called Words in Hand and they are going to put that, that text 
into sign language on uh, MP3s for us as well. So uh, I think the deaf community are really going to receive a huge uh, blessing um, end of this year uh, when that is launched. So thank you. Um, just one or two more things. No, nothing more. How's that? Eh? Yeah, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Yeah, everybody's sighing a sigh of relief. Please sow into the kingdom of God. You are a church that honors and loves the Lord and respects the word of God as the eternal, inerrant word of God. I love working with people that have that point of view because we as Baptists have the same point of view. You don't mess with the word of God. It's the word of God. And um, as we know, the, the word never returns void. It will always accomplish its purpose. So let us get the word out. Let it do its work in people's lives. And with your help, we can touch a whole lot more than we could have otherwise. Bottles are at the back. I'll be at the back. On your pamphlets is a debit order form. If you'd like to give me your name and telephone number and sign, we'll contact you. You sleep on it and we'll contact you and say, what's your bank details? How much do you want to give? Or maybe you've said, no, I've given it a second thought. Don't worry. But that's also an option. And I've got a pen. Okay. All right. And I'll stand at the back table if you're into that at all. So thank you so much for listening to me so attentively. And... Um, Bible Society appreciates the Presbyterian Church, and I think you ought to appreciate the Bible Society. You have many Presbyterians involved at very senior positions in Bible Society as well. Let's make them proud as a church and support the work of Bible Society. Thank you so much. I'm going to put this off now, my brother. All right. Thanks so much. Very much, Clive. Um, yeah, perhaps just uh, two testimonies about Bibles and Bible Society. Um, as I said.